To many Laker fans' surprise, the Los Angeles Lakers have ultimately decided to waive 25-year-old physical phenom Mo Bamba, making him now an unrestricted free agent who could either walk away this summer for nothing or re-sign with the Lakers on a cheaper deal. Although Mo Bamba's tenure with the Lakers was short-lived, it was clear that Darvin Ham and the coaching staff had a lack of confidence that Mo Bamba would be able to contribute for a win-now team, even as a backup center who occasionally played spot minutes. Whether or not this is officially the end of Mo Bamba wearing the purple and gold, fans could come to terms with the fact that even with hindsight, the Mo Bamba trade at the deadline for Patrick Beverly, a second round pick and cash was well worth it. Fans would probably make that trade again 10 out of 10 times, being that it was a classic example of a low risk high reward move that could have panned out to be an absolute steal if Mo Bamba was able to materialize on his 3D potential, alongside Anthony Davis and at the very least, attempt to overwhelm the reigning chance with plenty of length at the rim. That's more than likely now water under the bridge, as Bamba being so young and inexperienced, would probably prefer finding a new home where he'd be seeing more playing time. And as for the Lakers, they'll have to quickly shift their focus to scooping up the top bargain centers available on the open market as soon as free agency begins. Up until the day of this video, there were basically zero young talented centers with two-way potential within the Lakers budget. That was until another young center was also released into the open market a 6'11", high-flying, versatile defender and rim protector, Jackson Hayes of the New Orleans Pelicans. From the ton of thumbnail, many of you guys may already know that in this video, we'll be advocating as to why Jackson Hayes might just be the Lakers' most optimal option at the center position if they want to get the most bang out of their buck, and how he would be an excellent complementary fit to Anthony Davis both on offense and defense. But first, let me know down in the comment section below, do you want Rob Plink in the front office to bring back Mo Bamba on a cheaper deal or should they move on to another project? If so, who? First of all, it should be clear by now that the Los Angeles Lakers are no strangers to revitalizing the careers of young lottery picks who were prematurely abandoned by their original teams. Last season was Malik Monk who the Lakers took a gamble on and it ultimately panned out to be one of the best bargain signings of that offseason as Monk would earn himself a lucrative payday the following summer. Lonnie Walker IV was on a nearly identical trajectory to start the season, serving as the Lakers' third leading scorer on most nights behind LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Roy Hachimura was traded for just a package of second round picks, and now he's on pace for a lucrative payday as well, after his newfound ceiling as a potential 3 level scorer who could also be a versatile defender. The list gets even longer with names like Stanley Johnson, Thomas Bryant and more, but the point is that if there's a young prospect who has a high motor and untapped potential, the Lakers player development staff will put them in position to succeed, and the same should be expected for Jackson Hayes. After all, Jackson Hayes was the 8th overall pick of the 2019 NBA draft for a reason, drawing comparisons to have other high-flying 6'11 shot blockers like Jared Allen and even some Tyson Chandler. Surely Hayes has had a difficult transition so far, but he's only 22 years old and he came into the league in such a raw state. There's no spinning the fact that he's coming off the worst season of his career, seeing an all-time low in minutes along with every other statistical category across the board, but zooming out and looking at the bigger picture, he's only one year removed from the best season of his career, where he was a 9.5 rebound, 1 block per game guy, who was able to maintain great efficiency on 62% from the field and 35% from beyond the arc. Unlike Mo Bamba, who had attractive stats but an underwhelming approach to the game, Hayes might actually be on the opposite side of that spectrum where he gives 110% on both sides of the floor and is coming off a season that totally misled people to believe he's no longer a two-way 3D rim protector that he just proved to be in the year prior. Not to point fingers, but with a prospect as physically gifted as Jackson Hayes, a lot of his efficiency is going to be dependent on an elite playmaker setting him up in the pick and roll, but frankly the Pelicans had none of that this past season. That's where the Lakers would come in as they have multiple elite playmakers in LeBron James, potentially D'Angelo Russell and Austin Reeves, all who could put Jackson Hayes in position to succeed on offense, while Anthony Davis lays the foundation for a pair of 7-footers to succeed on defense. Jackson Hayes' stock is currently at an all-time low, and if he's able to be scooped up at a price within the Lakers' budget, it should be a no-brainer considering the fact that again, Jackson Hayes is literally just one season removed from being exactly what the Lakers have been hoping to pair alongside Anthony Davis as a 3 and D floor spacer who could also shoot 35% from beyond the arc. So let me know down in the comment section below, back to the question at the start of the video. Would you like to see the Los Angeles Lakers bring back Mo Bamba or would you prefer the Lakers front office to move on to other high upside projects like Jackson Hayes? But that's it for the video, take it easy guys. 
grow this season from uh, spending some time in the, in the G League and taking over the starting role? Um, I feel like just Coach Green, like we sat down and talked, and he was just like, um, I want you to become that guy for us. I need you to be our X Factor. And like he just like showed me a bunch of film. And like after this is like after I came back from the G, just tell me stuff he wants me to do it before. I feel like that was able to help me a lot more, just specifically knowing my role and just being able to kind of learn and grow from that. I mean, you were super young, you know, when you got drafted by this team. What have you just learned in these three years about, you know, what it takes to, to make it at the NBA level? Shoot, a whole lot. I mean, first you need a good team, you need good coaches. I mean, we've had good teams and good coaches. It's just never been the right mix, and we never had the culture that Coach Green made for us this year, so I feel like that was a big part of my success. How much did it help having a coach tell you exactly what you needed to do? Oh, my gosh, so much. I won't leave it that could be that simple all the time. But uh, I mean, just him telling you like what, what he wants you to do and then you being able to go do that and then do some other stuff to help the team just always makes everyone's life easier. How much more team? do you think, I mean, look, you could be a senior in college right now. How much more do you think you still can grow and develop in, in what areas maybe specifically this summer? Um, I think I can still have a ton of room for growth. Um, I mean, I just hope some of them just be back home working on my game, just Try and get right for next season. Work on my shot some more. Work on my handle. Get it a little bit tighter. Work on getting through screens since I gotta be a guard now. Get through them screens. Just work on them drills with my dad. The football drills. So um, just stuff like that. Just little things that can help me. Uh, my foot. My, like my footwork. All just little stuff. Going back to the maybe the beginning of the season. What do you think were the areas that when you look back at the season, you're the most happy about that you made progress? In? Um, I felt like when they sat me out, because um, I mean, most guys, like, I mean, that's third year, you see a lot of guys start to go in that hole. Third year, I mean, it's my third year getting sat out like that whenever our team started losing. So just not sinking in that hole and like, you know, oh, they sent me to the G League, just kind of like curling up and just being able to be like, all right, you know, like, this is a learning experience. I can grow from this. In fact, that just kind of helped. And things have changed for you once you started playing more at the four. Do you feel like that's the spot where you feel comfortable moving forward? I mean, I would feel comfortable playing at any position. Um, I mean, I feel like the four is probably me at my best position. But I mean, I feel like they put me at the five. I mean, like I've been in my first two years, I can play there. If you need me to run a point, I run a point. But whatever the coach needs me to do to win, I'll do that, and I'll be comfortable doing that. And what did it take for you to kind of go through that junior experience and still be able to come out the other end and perform the way you did at the end of the year? Um, I felt like just going down there with Jose and Trey kind of also really helped me um, and be great. Um, one of our trainers, one of our PD coaches, um, they just kind of all kept me in the right mindset and just kept me from getting down on myself. Um, going down there third year, being my first time going down there, um, they all just really helped me with that and I felt like that just kind of helped me. Do you think it would have been a lot different if you were going by yourself? Oh, for sure. On those trips? I mean, not like a lot different, but it definitely would have been way different. Like, I mean, I probably would have had a worse attitude going down there, been a little upset about it. But I mean, like, they kept me up. And like, when I saw them getting that, I kept them up just because like, we all knew that we needed each other at this time. So it would have helped a lot. Yeah, and you're obviously extension eligible this summer. Just how do you feel about your future with the franchise? feel really excited. Um, I mean, I felt like this year was a great step in year, seeing what we could be, um, and I'm just really excited for next year. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Thank you so much.